we all think of fabs as massive buildings, wafer goes in, chip comes out, maybe some packaging, lots of research. TSMC has a load of very big fabs in Taiwan. Samsung has lots of big fabs in South Korea and in Austin. Intel's fabs are all around the world. And the news today is that the one in Oregon, their main one for technology development, and the one I visited recently, is expanding another 270,000 square feet of clean room space. What's your minimum specification? Intel's facility at Oregon is their main production and research facility. It's called Ronla Acres, and you'll have the D1A, D1B, D1C, D1D, and D1X. Apparently, they didn't want D1E on the side of the building, so D1X was more appropriate. D1X is a facility that I visited in December, and here's a quick look about what I did in the clean room there. So here we are inside the fab. It's actually quite busy. The last fab I went to was in Global Foundries, and there was like 12, 15 people the whole fab. I can literally see 12 people behind Jeff, the cameraman, at this point. The reason why everything is so yellow is because light interferes with the wafers. Wafers are usually stored in these big black foops or front opening unified pods, 25 wafers to a pod. The reason why I'm specifically standing here is A, this is one place where Intel allowed us to film, but also B, this is a very nice UV machine. And I think you can see Intel has going down here and at least another further in the fab. I asked how many, they won't tell us, but they've got a lot. For a company that hasn't productized EUV yet in the market, they are ready to produce at scale. These things take six months to install and the best part of six months to tune. So just getting them up and running is sizable. Last time I was in a fab and I asked about EUV machines, the subfab, the space underneath the fab is six times larger than conventional equipment. I've just been told by an Intel spokesperson that rather than go wide, they go down and further down in order to make it fit. Also just been told that some of these machines they actually have to strip the outside shell away just in order to fit them in. <laughs> There's lots of requirements for space when it comes to making wafers. So in that video, I was in D1X Mod 2, which is the second modification to D1X, though I think Mod 1 was actually when it was first built. So this is a first extension. And what's been created is D1X Mod 3, which is the next extension which was about three, four hundred feet from where I was standing. I got a chance to go into Mod 3, and it was very much in the process of being built. The clean room space had all been joined at that time. It was just a case of you had a lot of people moving in equipment. It was very bare. However, Mod 3 is going to be the site of Intel's next generation process node technology development. The site itself has been Intel's main technology development facility for over 20 years, and it's currently called Ronla Acres. However, as part of this announcement, it'll be renamed to Gordon Moore Park. Perhaps they're going to be dealing with more than more technologies at that place. The facility as it stands represents Portland, Oregon's biggest employer in the area. There are 14,000 people at the whole Gordon Moore Park facility, or Ronla Acres facility, Depending on when you watch this depends on when the renaming will happen. And this new extension will add to that. That being said, a lot of uh, process nodes technology production is automated. What you have people on site for is the research. So technically, when I visited the facility in December, they could have opened it then. Like I said, the clean room space was joined. It was a case of moving in a lot of the tools and production. Also managing the subfab to deliver all the power and chemicals needed for that aspect. When I asked Intel why it say it wasn't announced back then and it's being announced today, they said, well, the weather, now that it's Q2, is a bit brighter. And also trying to get state representatives and elected officials to come help open this part of the facility, especially as uh, 
one of Oregon's biggest employers, uh, you have to find a date that they're comfortable with as well. And it just so happened to be around this date. They could have opened it earlier. They could have opened it later. What is true, though, is that the facility tools are still being moved in. Today is not the announcement that the facility is full of tools. Part of the problem with that, going back to supply chain and all that dross, some of these tools have 18-month lead times, anywhere from ready today to 18-month lead times. And if you're talking about NA and high NA, they may be a bit more. Now, obviously, Intel plans for this in advance, and they buy the tools in advance, but they still need to roll them in, install them, tune them. Some of these tools, while they may have an 18-month lead time, may also take another three or six months to actually tune to be just right for either testing, development, or production. D1X Mod 3 at Gordon Moore Park will be the first facility to receive one of ASML's high NA EUV systems when they're ready. The uh, EX5, EXE 5000 series uh, development machine will be moved from where it's being produced over to Intel into D1X Mod 3. And then eventually when the EXE 5200 system, the one that's actually built for production volumes, that will also be moved into this facility. Intel has said that the idea of high NA is meant to intercept with both 20A and 18A. However, if the machine takes longer to bring in, longer to bring up, then both the 20A and 18A production nodes will be designed to use both regular EUV and high NA EUV. The reason for this is Intel doesn't want to be stuck waiting for one piece of the puzzle to be solved to move on to future process nodes. That technically means that the 20A and 18A production mo nodes under regular EUV may take slightly longer, maybe slightly more expensive to produce, but they'll be ready to go. When high and A is ready, it will intercept with the product line when it's ready, whether that's 2025, as intended, or slightly later. And on that note, part of the announcement today is also to reiterate Intel's trying to do five process nodes in four years. That's Intel 7, 4, 3, 20A, 18A. Now, 18A has been moved into technically 2024. Uh, technically, Pat announced this back in February, but Intel is reiterating that both in 2024, they want 20A and 18A to be in production. That might mean that 20A is kind of more of a pipe cleaner process uh, for only a few products, and 18A is meant to be the volume node. That has happened in the past. Intel went a step further in saying, or at least giving more clarity on the fact that they're going to do an internal node between Intel 3 and Intel 20A for some of the new technologies. We've gone over power vias on this channel before, where instead of having the transistors and then above that having both the power and the data signals, you split the data signals above and the power delivery below. This allows you just to adjust the noise and interference of having those two together but also gives you more room on each side. It's just a more difficult process to implement. What Intel will be doing here is an internal node using FinFETs plus PowerVias. Intel 3 is just FinFETs plus the regular stack with data and power, and Intel 20A is meant to be RibbonFETs with backside power delivery and then uh, data lines on the top. This internal node essentially mixes the two. They're only going to implement PowerVia, but they're not going to implement RibbonFET. This way, they can develop the technology without having to worry about the technicalities of the ribbon FETs. Intel has said that this internal node will not be used for production. They specifically said that no customer is currently building chips based on a PDK with FinFETs plus backside power delivery. However, internally, they're going to treat it the same as any other node. So it's still going to have the same sort of bring up and yield improvement procedures that Intel has for a new process node. So really, Intel's doing six process nodes in four years. Just that one won't be available to customers. I also asked Intel about the FinFETs inside that intermediate, pro intermediate test node, because previously they've said they'll be testing backside power delivery with older process nodes just to get it right. I said, does that mean that this is a 22 or a 14 nanometer FinFET with backside power delivery? And they confirmed that it's actually going to be based on the Intel 4, Intel 3 EUV FinFETs. Uh, just to make sure that it's so closely aligned to 20A. So I will say that this new D1X Mod 3 expansion, 270,000 square feet, 
or to put it in Intel's terms, 3.5 football fields. If you remember the announcement that Intel was going to build a new facility in Magdeburg, Germany, a few, week, a few weeks ago they announced it for a 2027 production. Still, there is work ahead to secure the necessary construction and other permits, as well as the financial support needed to make the project competitive. Financial support, financial support. They stated in that presentation that the size of that facility, or at least the clean room, will be two football fields. This extension on an already production level facility at Ronald Acres at Gordon Moore Park in Hillsborough, Oregon, is three and a half football fields. So it's almost double the commitment that Intel has given to that region in Europe. Now, to put it into perspective, Intel stated that the expansion has cost $3 billion of D1X. This Mod 3 is $3 billion. However, that doesn't include any of the tools. Intel already has, the, obviously, the infrastructure around the facility to help bring it up very quickly compared to Magdeburg, which is more limited in that fashion. Though it does bring a sense of exactly what sort of volumes Intel is going to be bringing to Germany, to Europe. And I stated in my video at the time, I believe it's somewhere of the region of 20 to 30,000 wafer starts per month for those two football fields on a leading edge process. By contrast, this D1X Mod 3 expansion could almost double that. So all in all, Intel increasing their Hillsborough, Oregon facility by 270,000 square feet, renaming it from Ronla Acres to Gordon Moore Park, announcing a new test node combining FinFET and PowerVias rather than RiboFET and PowerVias, and also reiterating that their 18A process node is being pulled in a quarter because it's meeting their internal metrics for based on yield and application and when it's going to be on in time. So 2024, Intel plans to have both 20A and 18A moving into high volume production. That still probably means we're going to have products in 2025, but it's important to keep note of where those nodes are being produced and the stage of production, the yield, the process. Intel investing in new fabs is good. I've said this continually, regardless of where the money is actually coming from. Financial support. Intel building fabs out is good. This facility, as I saw it, still needs a lot of equipment uh, to produce those chips. But beyond that, part of the semiconductor supply chain issues isn't actually in the silicon in the chips itself. It's also in the packaging. Intel didn't state at this time an expansion of packaging at the site. And I've got a feeling as we move forward with this story, as more and more facilities get built and expanded, it's actually the packaging we have to pay more attention to. If you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it will instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.